let's design the perfect starter raft for chapter 3. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. I've designed another beginner's raft design that I'm really excited to share with you all today. This particular design is geared towards early gameplay, and you should be able to build this full boat within an hour of playing. It has plenty of storage space with 8 chests, 3 smelters, a great food and water setup for your survival needs, dedicated farming space, and everything you need to progress through the early story once you're ready. And that's all in less than 30 foundations. Plus, it's modeled after the Sloop from Sea of Thieves, so you can pilot your own mini pirate ship in Raft, which is pretty darn cool. I put a lot of work into designing aesthetic and functional rafts for these tutorials, so consider leaving a like if you enjoy the video and subscribing to see more raft builds in the future. But without further ado, let's build the perfect starter raft for Chapter 3. First up, let's go over materials. This is all of the materials for literally everything, including decorations, and you could definitely make a budget version of this using the cheap wood texture and excluding some of the extra stuff like a smelter or two. Anyways, you'll need just about 31 stacks of planks, 5 stacks of plastic, 5 stacks of leaves, 5 stacks of scrap, 6 stacks of nails, 7 stacks of rope, 18 dry bricks, 10 glass, 7 metal ingots, 9 hinges, 3 bolts, 5 circuit boards, and 2 stones, plus assorted flowers or whatever paint you want. That's all of the materials, so let's get building. Start with a 4x8 rectangle with rounded corners for the base of your ship. From there, you'll add a little triangle out of whatever side you decide to make the front with two triangle foundations. If you didn't know, you can get the direction of your wood grain to line up even when rotated by pressing the Z button when building a triangle floor or foundation to mirror it so that you don't have those pesky corners going in the wrong direction. I would recommend placing four collection nets here in the front of your raft but hooking is a far more efficient method of gathering materials in the early game. Eventually, you'll also want to fortify all of this to protect it from Jeremiah the Shark, but that's a step for down the road. To start building the ship part of the ship, use regular roof pieces on every diagonal triangle piece that you've made so far to connect in the front, and then place two more in the corners and the back. Everywhere else, place a half wall with a little upside down triangle to connect them to the roof pieces. You'll have two little gaps over your collection nets, but those are so you can get back onto your raft easily if you choose to leave it. Go two squares in from that little gap, and then place a normal triangle, then a window, and then another half wall. Mirror this on the other side to establish the space for your cabin, and then go ahead and fill in the roof. You can either do this with the floating triangle hack, or you can use the horizontal pillars. It doesn't really matter, but the horizontal pillars does add extra resources. Then you're going to want a staircase on the left side when facing the back, and you're going to want to add in some triangles and a half wall on the sides so that this looks a little more clean and complete. Then complete your cabin wall with a door in the middle and just a normal wall on either side. Line the upper deck with rope fences so that you don't fall off. Next, we're going to build a little cage on the back of the boat. You'll want a half pillar on every space along the back wall, and then two half pillars on every square along the back wall of your cabin across to the other side of the boat, basically creating two parallel lines of standing pillars. Then connect those dotted lines along the length of the ship, going from the pillars in the cabin over to the pillars on the back, with horizontal half pillars for every square. Along the back edge, connect those widthwise along the ship as well. The next major structure is the mast. Two squares in from the center of your front bow, place one pillar, then one more pillar on the square immediately behind that one. Between those two pillars, build a large triangle out of two small triangles that points towards the back of your ship. On the tip of that large triangle, build two more pillars up with one more small triangle on top. Connect the bottom of your ship to that very top small triangle with ladders, and then add another rope railing around your crow's nest so that you don't fall off of that either. And that's all of the basic structure completed, so now it's time to decorate. For the outside trim, add two horizontal pillars along the bottom half wall to connect the back of your cabin to the gap above your collection net. On the inside of your cabin, add a stack of two half pillars in each corner, then fill in pretty much every available pillar space in that top rectangle of your cabin on either side. This creates a little more dimension around your cabin to make it stand out more, and break up some of the color if you decide to paint this at all. 
on that back cage that you created, we're going to make a quasi tarp overhang using large carpets. These rectangle carpets can be placed on horizontal pillars if they're supported, so you'll need a total of 14 rectangle carpets that you can then place in a grid to cover your little overhang. You can also place two of your three antenna on the corners of your little overhang. This is a cool trick because it creates a solid looking top that feels a lot more empty downstairs. Speaking of downstairs, we're going to start by removing some of these extra pillars. You can remove everything that isn't either one of the horizontal pillars on the top or in a corner, so clear out all of your floor space. The reason for doing this out of half pillars is because then you get one plank and one nail back, so you don't waste any resources on scaffolding. Then cut out the foundation that's diagonal from the back right corner and place in your stationary anchor. This thing is a pain to fit into a small aesthetic builds, but we did it just for all of you survival purists out there. For lighting, I placed one cheap lantern on either side of the back and then added two smelters along the back wall where they would fit in behind the anchor. Then you can place your third smelter under your staircase. Remove that foundation directly in front of your smelter and place in your paint mill. This does remove one half wall, but you can build a half foundation and then replace that wall afterwards. The advantage of this design is that you can't fall through this hole accidentally, which is a huge win if you're clumsy like I am. And then you can place your water purifier next to the paint mill, which also means that you can collect salt water from that little hole too. Next, place two simple crop plots on the wall to complete this side of the cabin. On the wall between the door and the staircase, place four chests along the wall with a lantern on either side to make up the bulk of your storage. The rest of your storage is three chests that will go along the other window wall on the floor, which you can then place your bed on top of. Add in three more simple crop plots above the foot of your bed for some compact farming, and then a painting on the wall for a bit of life. That completes the inside and the underside of your cabin. On the outside of your door, add an advanced grill on either side for maximum cooking potential. Of course, this also needs more light, so add a lantern to either side, and then one more hanging from the underside of your triangle platform for good measure. On that little triangle platform, place your sail on the wider part, and then your last antenna on the smaller end. Climb to the crow's nest to place your Jolly Roger flag, as is required for a pirate ship, and then one more lantern just because. Down on the upper deck, you can place your research table in the far left corner when facing the front, and you can even put a small chest underneath that for some additional storage. Then you can place your receiver right next to that in the center of your upper deck, add in your battery, and then you can turn it on whenever you're ready to start your story journey. And finally, add a coat of paint in whatever colors you want for good measure. And that's how you build the perfect starter raft for chapter 3. This boat offers everything you could want in the early game in a super small package, so be sure to let me know what you think of this particular design, and if there are any other raft designs you'd like to see in the future. I'm currently working on a late game slash overkill raft design to share with you all, and I cannot wait for it to be done and to put the video out. But anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day. Thank you.